pride and playoff points on the line here at Lima Stadium Park. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this broadcast of high school football action here on WOSN. Fort Loramie taking on Lima Central Catholic. Glad to be here with you alongside Aaron Gilbert. I'm Patrick Hamler and uh, looking forward to a great matchup between these two teams. And the winner gets a playoff game at home next week. Both teams we expect to be in the postseason. Uh, but the winner, of course, uh, in addition to notching another uh, tick in the win column, also getting that uh, home playoff game, which is very nice to have. Yeah, you, you couldn't have said it any better. I mean, this is, has playoff implications all over it. I mean, both teams are in, but the winner of this game is going to have the ability to host a home playoff game. So definitely going to be an exciting afternoon for uh, high school football. And the kickoff is underway as Lima Central Catholic corrals this one first. And out to the 28-yard line is where LCC will get started. Carter Gasson on the stop, number 21 for Fort Laramie. And that will bring out the LCC offense led by senior Carson Parker. And Parker has... Uh, it seemed like he's been quarterback at LCC forever, but he comes out for uh, for his senior year, the end of the regular season of his senior year, uh, and has another great season put together. Yeah, he can really wing it uh, to all areas of the field, and uh, he's very, very athletic. And he's going to show off a little bit of that athleticism here on first down, spinning out to the 35-yard line. Ball came out at the 36-yard line, and it's still loose, and Fort Loramie has recovered it. So... A first carry it comes up with a turnover, and the Redskins are in business early. Well, and this mess that's coming down, it's, you know, it's been coming down pretty steadily throughout the day, and I'm sure that that football field is probably damp, and that football probably just uh, squeezed out of his hands, and I think number 16, Thomas Hoying, was in there to uh, disrupt it, and the football went on the turf, and the visitors come away with it. Big turnover. So the game starts with a turnover, and uh, that only helps the quarterback for Fort Loramie, Gabe Hart, getting his first start under center for Fort Loramie this season and takes that one right up the middle for uh, a couple of yards. Here to be Isaac Leppard on the stop along with Jaden Williams for the Thunderbirds. Not after gaining about four. So Hart starting the quarterback. Max Maurer, who has been the quarterback for Fort Laramie, is out there at wide receiver first time, and that is exactly who the ball goes to on second down, but it's just a little low incomplete as Maurer out there as a wide receiver today was uh, one of the top rushers on this team. Uh, 79 rushes for 367 yards, but uh, Coach Spencer Wills changing it up a little bit, uh, wanting to uh, show off Gabe Hart a little bit thinking there's a maybe a little bit better of a matchup situation there. In the gun at third down and six, and the handoff to Will Holland, and Holland right up the middle past the 20, breaking tacklers as he is finally brought down at the 10-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down, and the Redskins off the turnover are in business. They are in the structure red zone. Yeah, Billy Burke had first crack at him and he got away from Billy, but not till he was brought down with the help of his teammates, Josh Young, wrapping up, getting the stop for the T-Birds, but not after, like you said, a big run right there by that young man. So now first and 10 and a quick pass right there, slant into Carter Eilerman and Eilerman takes it in for the touchdown, a Busher electric touchdown. And just like that, the Redskins take the turnover, march right down the field and put it in the end zone. You know, neither one of us were uh, under the understanding of why the quarterback switched, but guess what? That was a heck of a throw right there on that quick slant. You know, great timing right there and got that quick touchdown off of the turnover by the Thunderbirds. Hart's second touchdown of the season came into the season with just the one, and now he has doubled it. So. Coming up here, the extra point is up and it is good. So the Redskins showing off early, forcing the fumble and turning it into seven points. And with 10.37 left in the first quarter, it's already 7-0 Fort Loramie. We'll be back.
Tonight's presenting sponsor is Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Fort Lormy takes the turnover, fumble recovery, and takes it right down the field for a touchdown, 7 0. Redskins on top, and now LCC with the football again. And they will start at the 30 yard line. Of course, Carson Parker and the LCC T Birds getting one play in. Parker fumbles the ball, recovered by Fort Loramie, and right down the field they go. Uh, LCC did not, obviously, did not want that to happen early on. You can't script it any better if you're the visitors. Fort Loramie coming in, I mean, <laughs> to get the thing on one possession and actually one play and get to turn over and then go down and execute your offense and being able to punch it in right there. That's huge coming over and playing on the the road and getting an early 7 nothing lead. All teams this weekend have had to deal with rainy conditions and slippery footballs, and it appears that tonight will be no different. Now, Parker, play action, has time, pass on first down, incomplete, was looking for Milan Cowens across the middle, and that will be second down. Aiden Bolin on the coverage right there. I think he was looking at Burke on the out pattern right there, but a good job defending was the visitors and went to his second check right there and just a uh, little bit uh, underthrown. Is that Burke and Matthew Quatman have been Parker's favorite targets so far this season. And now a second down, and this is going to be to Quatman. Little dump out past the 35 and able to stay in bounds long enough to pick up the Citizens National Bank first down. And that's a good bounce back play for Lima Central Catholic. Yeah, that's a real nice footwork along the far side boundary. Their little spin move. That spin move got him enough to get that first down. Did just enough to chip his man and then he released out into the flat and great execution there by the uh, T-Birds. You see it on the Web Insurance Instant Replay. First and 10 ball on the 41 yard line. And Parker is gonna keep this one out across the 45 to midfield and gonna be tackled at around the 49 yard line. Aiden Bolin among others in on the stop for Fort Loramie and thought someone lost a shoe. Someone did lose a shoe. Nope, it was a hand warmer. Carson Parker's hand warmer came off. Roger Hoying also in on the assisted tackle there for Fort Lormie. Big gain if you're LCC. Makes this a uh, little easier play call, second and one. Yeah, second and short. So coaches like to say the playbook opens up and it's gonna be a pass. Parker going long, has Billy Burke open at the 20-yard line and able to stay up and wrestled down at the 11 yard line is Carter Gasson making the tackle there, but that's good for a Citizens National Bank first down and the T-Birds now in the structure red zone. Yeah, the big fella went up with those big paws of his at 6'6 frame and secured the football. Not only did he secure it, he kept his balance and used that lower leg strength and got an extra three or four yards. Nice pitch and catch right there for LCC. Billy Burke, the 6'6 senior. Uh, another name that has been said it seems like for a number of years here at Lima Central Catholic. And Parker with the keeper here on first down, barrels ahead to the five. Carter Eilerman on the stop. Eilerman yeah. mostly an offensive guy, but has had his Spots on defense this season. That's his 15th tackle of the year. Second down and goal. High snap. Parker corrals it and takes it in for the touchdown, the Busher Electric touchdown. And you know, once you get that 6'3, 210 pound guy going, it's awfully hard to stop. My him. goodness, that was a basketball play right there because that ball came back to him quick. And like you said, a high snap. And he snagged that thing with those big mitts of his and like you and just turned it upfield and found his way to the end zone. He's the type of quarterback, you know, that's going to go to the next level and he's going to compete for a spot just because of his athleticism and his strength. But what a move right there to get into the end zone. Great drive if you're an LCC uh, player and fan and coach. 
Thunderbirds march 70 yards down the field and gets the doink off the left side of the upright and up and good. 8.26 remaining in the first quarter. Hey, we're all tied up at seven here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And the instant replay is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Great answer by the T-Birds, marching 70 yards down the field. Carson Parker punching it in from five yards out, and it's all tied up at seven here at Lima Spartan Stadium. Yeah, he definitely didn't show any, you know, uh, confusion or panic or anything. Very poised, held his composure and let him right down the field. And the kick fielded. Well, Will Holland will be the one who picks it up. 4-4 four, four, Lormie, a little full head of steam out to the 38-yard line, and that's where the Redskins will take over on offense. Appeared to be E.J. Jones on the stop. You know, you made reference to people coming into the stadium, you know, with Ohio State Taking care of Penn State, certainly, and keeping the Big Ten and National Championship aspirations alive. Meanwhile, playoff home game aspirations for both of these teams as Holland takes it out across the 40 to the 43-yard line before he is dropped. Trying to catch a number there for the T-Birds. I think he could hear me if I yelled out to him to turn around. <laughs> I don't know, open the window. Everybody see, in the stands would turn around there, wouldn't he? Like, what, what are you doing? Now, there's some guy in the press box that's <laughs> yeah. yelling at you. Gabe Hart back to pass, pass tipped, but able to bring it in is Max Maurer. And Maurer tackled at the 46-yard line. This could be good for a Citizens National Bank first down. And I'll tell you what, you know, Maurer was moved from quarterback to wide receiver in favor of Gabe Hart. But, you know, first six, seven minutes of this game, that looks like a pretty darn good move by Spencer Wells. Well, I'll tell you what, and that kid, you know, the Maurer name is a very popular name. And I'm telling you, uh, when you play at Fort Laramie in that area, that you're athletic. So that was an athletic throw right there. Holland picks up three on that play as Caden Falke comes up with a stop for the T-Birds. That young man I was trying to identify on the stop was Carson Hefner. My apologies for not getting him in there on that call, as well as Josh Young. I would imagine we'll have another quite a few opportunities to call Hefner's name throughout this contest. One of their better defenders. Hart looking back and almost intercepted. Oh Mylon Cowens had that in his hands and just couldn't bring it in. Good defensive play. That's going to bring up third and nine. That's almost like a slam pattern because he plays split end also. And yeah, he'd have got that one. He'd have turned around and come the other direction. He'd had a lot of yards. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, and now third and long up for the Redskins. Hart drops back with time. Pass is complete to, I think that's Maurer over there at the 39, I'm sorry, the 41 yard line and slips on the turf. So that'll bring up fourth down and about four. Quatman on the stop. We'll see what the Redskins decide to do, and it looks like they are going to go for it. Might actually run a play or maybe try and draw LCC offsides. We'll see. Oh, they're going to go for it. Hart rolling on fourth down. Flag on the play as Maurer brings it in at the 34 yard line. And with the flag where it is, that's usually the neighborhood of holding. Oh, it's chop oh, block. You're absolutely right, partner. They're going to call a chop block. So we get against the offense. So we're going to redo fourth down, and that might change the calculus for Spencer Wells. Might opt to punt it now instead of going forward on fourth down, which had been 
You know, it that's says the National Bank first down. Well, and that's a rule that they've really tried to clean up to protect the lineman's knees. We had one last night where they, they got caught on a blindside block, and some people didn't understand the blindside block. That was put in to protect, the obviously, the upper body and the head area. So, yeah, those are, those are rules that are put in to protect for the safety of the players. Spencer Knopf back to punt. And that one, I think, went off the right side of his foot, but takes a nice Fort Laramie bounce. It's going to roll all the way to the 18-yard line before it is down. Yeah, Brady Malcolm on the pressure there, number 64, as the sophomore, six foot, 227 pounds, was bearing down, and he may have just uh, caused enough distraction there to, to, to put that one off the side of the foot there on the kick. So the Thunderbirds will get the football back as they're assisted by the blocking penalty to get their defense off the field. You can check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings and for more sports and teams and anyone in the state. You can check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. First and 10 at the 18 for the Thunderbirds. Parker takes a snap. And is going to run this one, looking for some space on the left side and not finding much of any. There is Brock McCumber and Roger Hoying in there on the stop for Fort Laramie. Good call. But what a great job by Fort Laramie stringing it out, especially by number 81, Carter uh, Eiderman, really strung it out and forced him back to the inside. And when I say him, Parker on that keeper right there and allowing his teammates to mop up for the play there. So that's a play that Parker has very successfully run over the last few years and has gotten a lot of yardage on that. So uh, good job by Fort Laramie to really keep that from getting much of anywhere. Only about a gain of two on that play. Now second down. Here's Parker. Eilerman bringing the pressure, but Parker still gets it off to Burke. Wide open at the 45. And it's a foot race and finally brought down at the 23-yard line as Thomas Hoying makes a touchdown saving tackle. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Boy, what a well-thrown ball. Great execution on both ends. Mr. Burke there with that uh, just breakaway sprint ability. And they went vertical right there, and he got behind the secondary. and. Like you said, Mr. Hoying saved the touchdown for Fort Laramie. Parker to Burke for a 60 yard pickup and the T-Birds are moving on offense. 418 remaining here in the first quarter. All tied up at seven, but the T-Birds, as we said, are in business. And I think there's some movement early on the line and indeed there was. That's going to push the T-Birds back five yards. Yep, somebody got a little antsy. Wasn't in rhythm. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of these LCC kids as well as Fort Laramie on the hardwood here starting within the next month. Got to get through the playoffs, so we're going to have a lot of playoff coverage coming up on WOSN. Stay tuned. For Tomor sure. Tomorrow is the big day as far as pairings are going to be released. And there'll be some determinations, too, uh, when exactly the uh, basketball season will start for some of these schools, depending on how far they go in the postseason. Here's Parker. Nice run out to the 15, lower in the shoulder, and going all the way down to the 13-yard line. But and not before Aiden Bolin and Thomas Hoying making the stop there for Fort Wayne. What a great run. Yeah, he didn't mess around, did he, partner? He put his shoulder down. No, he was determined to get yardage, and that's absolutely what he did. Not a not a quarterback type run, and but of course Carson Parker is, has has done that lower in the shoulder, lower in the head, and getting those extra yards, and got a chunk of that back. Now second down and one coming up as we come up on three minutes remaining in the first quarter, all tied. But the T-Birds looking to deal with that. Here is Quatman on second down and nothing doing big as Roger Hoying came in there for the TFL. Big, big play. Yeah, Parker's got a little bit of Aiden Pratt in him from Van Wert. He's got that size, you know, and really athletic and makes solid decisions with the football. Yeah, that's a really great comparison. You know, Pratt's gonna be a really good player at University of Finley. I, my personal opinion, I think they got a steal with that young man. Mm -hmm. Go. 
Pratt, of course, bringing a lot of success along with his teammates to Van Wert. Parker to Quadman and for Loramie. Sniffing this one out again as McCumber in there on the stop, and he had his friends there with him, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So the Redskin defense really bowing up here yeah. after the big play. Yeah, and Billy, you know, you saw Billy Burke in frustration hammer the ground right there. He tried to get a solo block on Carl, or excuse me, Cole Barnhorst, and he got around him and made that uh, tackle right there. Nice play by that young man. So it looks like. They are gonna go for it here on fourth and three. Fort Lormy gonna burn one here? I think it was Oh no, yeah, yep. Fort Lormy. So they did so they took a timeout. And we will take it as well. 141 remaining in the first quarter, all tied up at seven. T Bird's looking to go in here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. And tonight's red zone sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Ohio Outdoor bring your indoors out. LCC in the red zone, in the Structure Red Zone, facing a fourth down and three as they try to keep this drive alive. It started at their own 18 yard line. Watman in the backfield with Parker. Man in motion, fourth and three. Pitch out to Quadman. Working that left side, gonna try and have enough space and able to stay on his feet. Second effort gets the Citizens National Bank first down as he's pushed out at around the six yard line. It's gonna be first and goal for the T-Birds. Yeah, you, you hit it on the head right there, partner. Barhorst and Thomas Hoying had him secured on the edge and his, uh, Wiggle ability, let's just say, and slipperiness got him away and got him enough set, great second effort to get that first down. Everything else is slippery here tonight. Oh, Why absolutely. should the running backs yep. be? You betcha. T-Birds take advantage of it now. First and goal for LCC. Ball at the three-yard line. Parker, quick slant. Or, I'm sorry, a screen pass to Quadman, and Quadman is going to take it in for the Busher Electric touchdown. Boy, Billy Burke with a great block on the outside, springing him free for the end zone. An 82-yard drive capped off with the Quadman touchdown, and the T-Birds take the lead, 13 to seven. Yeah, Billy Burke could have got upset and, and hung his head on that block, but he came back with vengeance right there and did, did a great job with execution, allowed his teammate to find the end zone. LCC has done a pretty good job so far tonight of kind of responding to adversity. We talked about the, or saw the fumble, the very first play of the game by Parker. Uh, Parker came right back on the field on the next offensive possession and took him right down for a touchdown and has now taken him for a, another touchdown. 82 yard drive with a 60 yard completion and a touchdown by Matthew Quatman makes it 14 to seven LCC. 104 left in the first quarter, we'll be back. Welcome back. Today's touchdown sponsor is Busher Electric, a full service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electrical needs. Lima Central Catholic on top, 14 to seven on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Coming up on the final minute of this first quarter and you know, 21 points scored in the first I'm not saying we're surprised by the amount of offensive output. Of course, these teams have combined for around 70 points the last couple of times they've met. Big run right there, wasn't it? Right up the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a solid return. That's going to take the ball out to the 40-yard line. So, Bortle Army with a not bad field position to start. Of course, uh, these two teams have met the last two years, and it's been 
Uh, Fort Laramie coming out on top both times. Last year they won 35 to 34. The year before that they won 36 to 31. So uh, expecting a fair amount of points to be scored in this one and we haven't necessarily been let down yet. Hart is gonna keep this one up the middle on first down, showing off the legs a little bit, gets across the 50 to the 47 yard line, good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Hart showing off the wheels a little bit on that play. Got 14 yards before Billy Burke come up from that safety spot to make the stop. Probably one more play here in the quarter, depending on what they do. Holland in the backfield along with Hart. And Holland gets the handoff on first down across the 45 to the 42, where he is tackled. Carson Hefner appeared to be number eight on the stop. You know, both of these teams, Patrick, are dangerous coming into the playoffs, you know? Mm -hmm. When you get around that seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 spot, those are dangerous teams. And they line up, but I don't know they're going to get this play off. They will not, so they'll switch sides and get to the next quarter. After one, it's 14 to seven, LCC on top of Fort Laramie. Second quarter coming up here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's presenting sponsor is Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Second quarter action ready to get started here at Lima Spartan Stadium. Lima Central Catholic with a 14 to seven lead over Fort Laramie. Patrick Hamler and Darren Gilbert here with you on a somewhat cold and a little bit rainy Saturday afternoon, but so far the uh, crowd has been pretty nice. Can we use the word blustery? Sure, <laughs> I'm good with blustery. <laughs> Blustery, damp. <laughs> Redskins back in action. Hart going for it. And almost bringing that in is Eilerman on second down and five. And hopefully they both get up here. LCC player is, is shaken up down there at the three yard line. I think it's. I, I don't want to speculate. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure who it is is down there. Um, Possibly Young. It could be. In any case, we're going to step away and take a timeout. Just underway here in the second quarter, LCC up 14-7. to Welcome back. The downed T-Bird was Josh Young, able to get back up. Good to see. Yeah. Yeah. They have a little banged up. We'll see if he re-enters the contest later on. In any case, it's going to be third down and six for Fort Laramie and a flag coming out. And I think it's, yep, offsides against LCC. So that third and six is going to turn into third and one. Yeah, they were going to run a little twist action. That defensive end was going to come on the inside of the defensive tackle and the defensive tackle jumped just a little bit too quick. Puts in a very, like you said, a very short third down situation for the visitors. So Holland in the backfield along with Hart. And we're gonna have Fort Laramie taking another timeout, their second one of the half as they talk this one over. Well, we're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 a month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So anytime WOSN is uh, showing, whatever WOSN is showing on their programming, you can access it from your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your whatever electronic device you use. I think I, I think I got them all. I think that was all the... Oh yeah, and there's gonna be a bunch of football playoffs come on, you know, that we're gonna be covering, and then we get right into basketball, boys and girls basketball, swimming events, wrestling events, and then you turn around and you go into tournament time, and then before you know it, spring's gonna be here. Yeah. We'll keep you we company can, this we can, winter. We can't do it without, you know, the great sponsorship that we get from businesses throughout our region. Thank you very much. Without a doubt. Now here we go, third and one. 
Hand off to Holland is going to go up the middle and flag coming out at the end of that. Uh, it looks like it's Citizens National Bank first down, pending what the penalty is. Flip a coin, either a hold or a face mask, and I'm going to say face mask. I'm going to say I think the one of the officials is signaling face mask on the defense. Can so, I say it cheated? Because <laughs> I saw the hand signal. I, I, yeah. But it's not a flagrant. It's, it, it's a uh, non-flagrant. That's only going to be a five-yarder. So the it'll be added to the end of the run. So it is a Citizens National Bank first down. That will advance the ball to around the 31-yard line. And the Redskins still keeping it moving. They run like a two right back system. Here's Holland again on the handoff. And this time, LCC is there on the stop. Ball comes loose, but they're going to say he was down. Carson Parker in there on the stop for LCC. And uh, EJ Jones took off with that one. Yeah, he stripped that one, ripped it right out of the hands of the ball carrier, but the, the whistle had been blown dead, like you said. Carson Parker, I believe, is who you said made first contact. It's going to be awarded with the tackle. Because if not, Mr. Jones was off to the races for the opposite end for a touchdown. Uh, yeah, that was a strip six for LCC. Looked like Jim Marshall. People's not going to recognize Jim Marshall, but that's <laughs> the only problem Jim Marshall did is he ran the wrong direction. Do you remember the video on that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Here's Hart looking in for Maurer and got him for a touchdown. Yeah, safety didn't rotate over the top quick enough, and what a great throw and a great route down the seam vertical. Great execution for the visitors, and we're going to look at a tie ball game. Knock in this extra point. We're going to be knotted up at 14-14 with under 11 minutes to go before half. This thing's going to turn into another Donnybrook like the last two years. And it certainly looks that way. There you saw it on the Web Insurance instant replay is that one was almost pitch and catch. Bauer backing in the end zone to bring that one in. And now with the extra point, ties this one up at 14. So strap in. We have got a contest on our hands at Lima Stadium Park. 10.40 left in the first half, and we're all tied up at 14. <laughs> 14 all, Fort Loramie with a touchdown drive to notch this one up, and we are, uh, we are in for a great contest here. Quadman returning that one now to the 32-yard line. And uh, both teams trading scoring drives. And just when you thought maybe one team was pulling away, the other one answers with vigor. And now it'll be the T-Birds chance with the football to see what they can do here with 10.34 left in the first half. A.J. Siegel on the stop for Fort Laramie. T-Birds will begin the strings on the ring. 31 yard line. So Parker brings the offense back out onto the field. Ball just shy of the 32-yard line. First and 10, Parker back to pass, finds Burke. Across the 40 to the 42-yard line, a flag comes out at the end. Cole Barhorst with the tackle, and I think there's going to be another face mask. Yep, I believe so. He was right on top of it. Good eye, partner. Going to be a five-yarder. I was just getting ready to say that's a heck of a matchup between those two on the outside, and that's uh, they're going one and one, one on one defensively with Mr. Burke. So this is National Bank first down for the T-Birds. So they were close to that, and then tack on an additional five yards. So ball at the 46 now. Three wide receivers to the right side. Now man comes in motion. Parker is looking for Burke. Has him at the 25. Pass complete to the 20. And Burke tackled third out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Max Maurer in there on the stop, but not before another big gain. And a Citizens National Bank first down as the T-Birds are back in the structure red zone. Yeah, the T-Birds are seeing something from the press box that Fort Laramie's doing defensively and taking advantage of it and using it to their liking right there, going one-on-one -on -one between Parker and Burke. Big play there for the Thunderbirds. And you saw on the web insurance instant replay there that Burke had, was out about 10 yards downfield and then saw that separation, and it was just enough to get the ball in there. Mauer in there on the stop, and now the T-Birds in business. 
at the 15 yard line. And Parker is gonna keep this one, looking for some space up the middle, but not finding much of anything. I say Maurer was in there on the stop, but I think it was, I think it was Brock McCumber who made first contact and kind of held Parker in place there for Fort Laramie. Calder Berkman also, I think he had him by the ankles, letting okay. his teammates come in and clean up. But is that who you're looking for at the bottom of the pile? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Berkman had him by the okay. ankles and slowed him up to allow his teammates to come in there. Okay. Calder Bergman, the 5'9", 205-pound senior. For that, and everyone that plays fantasy is already like in so many leagues. I'm afraid I don't want to do another one. So a loss of one in the play, second down and 11. Play action. Swings that one out and nowhere to go. A couple of yards and that's about it. Barhorse in there on the stop. Heck of a play coming up there because I'll tell you what, Mr. Quatman's quick and elusive and nice, solid, fundamental open field tackle right there. See, that was Mikey Quatman that was, I think, that was recipient of that one. Maybe that was Matthew. In any case, it's third down and 10 coming up for the D-Birds. And Fort Wormy is going to take their final timeout of the first half. So they want to talk this over. Obviously, head coach Spencer Wells seeing something that he didn't like on the defense. So we'll keep it here with 826 remaining in the first half, all tied up at 14. And, and you get the sense, you know, this game has been a game that has come down to the last drive, the last possession over the last couple of years. And right now it's tied at 14. These teams going back and forth. And it looks like this could be a very uh, similar game that we've had the last couple of years. You know what? It's really easy to come into week 10 knowing, you know, 99% chance that you're in the playoffs and you can come in here and play the game flat and rest, you know, some of your, your, your starters. But neither coach is doing that. Neither are the kids, and there's a lot, like we talked in pregame, there's a lot of implications on the line. A win here, and you get to host a home game. So they're laying it on the line, both ball clubs. And like you said, this timeout right here, there's nothing, uh, no timeouts left for Fort Larmy, right? Or do they have one left? I think they, that's all of them. They've, I, I've counted three timeouts. That's used. what they're, I thought, too. They're showing one on the, on the scoreboard, but... We'll go with my count until I'm proven wrong. That's, yeah, I thought, that's it was, I thought they were out of them, too. <laughs> Barker back to pass. Pressure coming. Looking up end zone and incomplete. Quatman, the intended receiver, and bailed out there a little bit because the Fort Loramie defender, Carter Gasson, had slipped on the turf. It was going to be a easy touchdown, but instead it falls incomplete, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Gasson had a beat on the ball right there, but like you said, slipped right there at the goal line, and that ball was almost caught in the end zone. Been a heck of a catch. I think if Mr. Parker had that one to do over again, he'd have threw that thing a little harder into the back of the pylon. I think you're right. So LCC is going to take a, their timeout as they want to talk things over, and I'm sure one of the decisions being talked about right now is well possibly is like do you, do you try and kick a field goal here do you think about a 31 yard field goal from where the ball is or do you try and go for it on fourth and ten well in these conditions the winds the wind appears to be not not a non-factor right now not like last night so the winds appear to have calmed down the rain there's not much of a rain but there is like a light mist i don't know what kind of leg the kicker has but i gotta believe they're gonna go for it on fourth down and then if they don't get it you know they're gonna give the opposition the the football what at the 15 yard line just inside yeah. the 15. yeah so you would you would pin the fort Laramie defense back and I believe Alex Ariano is the kicker, number five for LCC. And I do not see him out there. So I think this is going to be a fourth down and 10 attempt, maybe. Rolling out. Here's Parker on fourth down, and the catch is made. Touchdown. Pusher electric touchdown for Billy Burke. And on fourth down, they get six. 
Wow, great execution right there by the Thunderbirds. Quarterback to wide receiver, I like to call the kid a tight end, but you know what? You put 30 pounds on that kid at a tight end spot, my goodness gracious. He runs exceptionally well. I watched him on the hardwood. He gets up and down the floor, does really good job, you know, using his athleticism, but that athleticism, but that was a great pitch and catch right there for LCC. Burke with his eighth touchdown of the season. And the T-Birds take the lead. 21 to 14. 814 remaining here in the first half. We'll be back. Welcome back to today's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And our instant replay is brought to you by Web Insurance, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. As the kick is going to squirt out of bounds at around the 15 yard line. So Fort Loram, you will get an additional few yards out of that. 35-yard line, is that correct? I believe so. <coughs> so the ball is spotted, and now the Redskins will come back out and put their offense on the field and see if they can tie this one back up. And You, know, you said it during the break that this is going to be a shootout, and so far... We uh, have absolutely seen that. Here's Hart on first down. Nice catch by Maurer, able to stretch his hands out there as he about, ball comes out. And I believe Fort Lormie's gonna hang on to it. And indeed they do, second down. Big block on the outside there, Car Carter Eilerman, excuse me, number 81, freeing his teammate up. That, like you said, that was a great catch. That was a low throw around the mm -hmm. shoelaces, and he went down and got it and then put it on the ground, and effort from either him or his teammates to recover that football. Second down and five. Hart pass complete out to Ty Kemper. Broke one tackle, didn't he, on that far side? Indeed he did. Good for assistance, National Bank first down. That'll bring the ball out to the 46-yard line. Mr. Kempera, Jr., 6'3", 205. Good size for that young man. Mm -hmm. Fresh set of downs for the Redskins. Hart in the gun, hand off to Holland and looking for some space on that left side and having none of it is Carson Parker in there on the TFL. And they're gonna give him uh, credit to the 41. So only a loss of five, but he was tackled a good 10, 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage. My goodness, did he close on that football quick like. Yeah. Second down and 15. Had to pick that one off the turf. Here's Hart rolling around and in trouble and slips down at the 29 yard line is actually about the first time we've seen the, the turf affect the play here so far today. And a huge loss for four army. That's gonna bring up third down and a cruise ship. Yeah, EJ Jones with the pressure along with teammate Caden Falk, the sophomore, six foot, 195 pounds. Tried to change directions there, and like you said, feet went out from underneath him. That's another big loss. So that'll make it third down and 28. Ball spotted on the 29 yard line. They're going to have to get to the LCC 44 yard line for a first down. Pressure coming, and they're gonna get him for a sack down at the 23-yard line. So LCC's defense, with a little help from the conditions, 
able to force a punt. E.J. Jones along with Jaden Williams for the TFL and Sack for the T-Birds. And that's one position if you're Fort Laramie, you'd want to race real quick out yeah. of your minds and get refocused. Good series there by LCC. Now we're back to punt and it could have been a lot worse. You know, that fumble that went on the ground, well, LCC sure, right. could have got it and, you know, went down and, and, and something dangerous could have happened. So. Mauer gets the punt off and will be caught at the 43 yard line by Burke. So the T Birds will get the football back in decent field position. So the T Bird defense coming up pretty big. And now the offense will come back out and see if they can extend the LCC lead with 516 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, look at the silver lining if you're Fort Laramie. You know, ball goes on the turf, could have been a turnover, you know, and then you're looking at being down two scores. Now you just got to mm -hmm. buckle down regroup, refocus, and try to get a stop and keep LCC, you know, minimize their yards right here at this final 515 or 516 to go in the second quarter. Parker in the gun at first down. And the handoff up the middle, getting close to midfield before being stopped. So a nice pick up there on first down. <laughs> Aiden Bolin on the stop, along with Ray Hoing. Mylon Cowan's in on the carry. No, I'm sorry, that's Quatman. Matthew Quatman in on the carry. It's just dark enough, isn't it, to, to have difficulty seeing the numbers. You know what I'm, what I'm saying? Those red, right. those red numbers. Well, the four gets scrunched up enough, it looks like a nine. Yeah, but you said that the other day about threes and eights. You know, it happens with me quite frequently, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> That's I gotta, Quatman. I got to give you some grief. <laughs> that was Quatman, I can tell. He's a little closer now. He's more on this side of the field, so I can, I can see it. Well, I was really surprised right there. There wasn't a face mask, because that hand was up right, there near yeah. the face mask. But what a great job that appeared to be. Uh, Lincoln Woods did a good job, you know, not not grasping the face mask. You know, I think he made contact, but there was no fingers inside that face mask. Nice job by that young man, keeping his composure. To borrow Mark Miller's binoculars, this keeps up. <laughs> They're down in four. Parker gonna take this one himself. Has a Citizens National Bank first down, and then some out to the 35 before he is pushed out of bounds there by Thomas Hoying. And moving the sticks they are, Lima Central Catholic. How about that offensive line right there? Caden Johnson, Brady Malcolm, Andrew Baldoff, Chris Karankovich, I hope I said that right. Whew. Gianni McKee, good job on that right side, springing him, big yards right there, big chunks of yards. And you saw on the web insurance replay there, Parker also doing a great job of turning up field, not trying to extend it all the way to the sideline. And here he goes again, and there you see it again, turn up the field, lower in the shoulder, nice shot given as he's out to the 28 yard line. Nice pick up there on first down for Parker. Yeah, Carter Gasson stuck his nose in there and made the tackle. He got he got you know pushed back a little bit, but he hung in there and made the, the tackle. You'll get credit for the stop as it comes up second down and four for the T-Birds, 320 and uh, down 320 now left in the first half. Yeah, Mr. Parker's not one of those kids that wants to juke you. He's going to try to go through you, and he's going to drop that shoulder. That has been his running style throughout his high school career. And here's Parker again. Now he's working to that left side, showing off a little bit of that speed as well as he stiff arms, pushed out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down in the structure red zone once again is Lima Central Catholic. Yeah, Bar Horse pushed him out at the boundary, but not until another huge gain right there. What I really like to see is Carson Parker switching the football to his left hand and then using that right hand, protecting it, and then using the right hand for a stiff arm. That's a fundamental move there by that young man. But like you said, he's been doing it for a long time. And especially if you can do it in conditions where maybe the ball might be a little slippery, a little wet, and still able to do that. Here's Quatman on first down. And he picks up a couple on that play. And that's a coaching thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a, a tribute to your coaches and fundamentals being taught and properly doing things. And 
It comes down to execution. He does it very well. I think that was Mauer and Hoying in on the stop for Fort Loramie. Second down coming up is two and a half remaining in the first half. And I don't know if LCC is going to be able to take this clock all the way down. I'm sure head coach Scott Palti would like to take as much time off the clock as he can and not leave Fort Loramie a lot of opportunities to score. This one tipped up in the air and incomplete. Didn't quite see who got their hands on it for Fort Loramie, but good defensive play, and that'll bring up third down. Yeah, really, really fortunate because there was a host of white jerseys in there, and he tried to sling that one in there and on a little slant pattern to Burke, but great defense, like you said. Somebody got their hands on it. I'm not sure which one. I don't think you are either because there was just so many white bodies that or white uniform bodies in there. That thing could have been picked off. You know, Parker, yeah. very fortunate. So I'm convinced it was a guy in a white jersey. That's yeah, really all, that's all I got. Yep. <laughs> Black helmets because they were there was a bunch of them there. Third and goal, option pitch. Quatman looking for some space on that side, cuts it back in. Fort Laramie there in on the stop. <laughs> Quatman extends out to the three yard line and it's going to be fourth down. Boy, I'll tell you what, I hope that's a replay play because you know where the quarterback went? He went all the way out here to the right side and got into a tussling match, but man, he laid the wood on a block. <laughs> that's your quarterback yeah. that's doing that. And it was all clean. I mean, they just, they got tangled up and yep. he's trying to help his ball club. Looking to get the play from the sideline as it does appear they are going to go for it on fourth down. Last time they went for it on fourth down down here, they got a touchdown. I think they're going to run this one all and they're going to take a timeout. So they'll run the clock down to 126 remaining in the first half with a 21 to 14 lead. And of course the option still on the table to go for the field goal. So kind of a decision time here is uh, you can attempt the touchdown, attempt the field goal. Um, you're gonna still give Fort Loramie some time, although in consideration uh, Fort Loramie with no timeouts, but the clock stops every time you get a field goal, or I'm sorry, every time you get a first down, which is something that helps out the Redskins. Well, we still need to find out because guess what's on the board over there? Timeout for Fort Laramie. They've got one and one still yeah, up on showing, the board. They said they're showing Fort Laramie with a timeout still. You know, I think if you're LCC, you know, you're playing on your home field, you've got a little bit of momentum, you have an opportunity to go up two scores. I think you you take the opportunity and try to to uh, punch the thing in. Well, if you do and that, they're just doing just steps. Right, they're going yeah, to. So. like they're going to take the points. And I'm sure Fort Laramie's probably aware there's a possible fake, you know, so they're mm -hmm. going to do some interior pressure, but they're going to keep the outsides covered. Quatman out to attempt the extra, oh, I'm sorry, the field goal. And puts that one through. Big kick there by that young man. 25-yard field goal is up, and it is good. So 120 remaining in the first half. It's 24-14 lead for the T-Birds here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 24-14 lead for Lima Central Catholic. Both teams have spent a fair amount of time in the structure red zones. LCC getting three points off their last visit. Now Fort Loramie has a minute and 20 to try and do something and add some points onto the board. They have one timeout remaining. And obviously would like to erase their uh, last drive, which seemed to really do nothing but go backwards as the return Good kind of job by the middleman. Nice job, Ty Kemper right there, you know, going down and picking that football up and getting as many yards as he could. It's a little bit of a rugby scrum there out to the 37-yard line. That's where the Redskins will take over. Isaac, 13 left. Sorry, partner. Okay. Isaac Leopard on the stop there along with Billy Burke. <laughs> Hart brings the offense back out. Hart back to pass and complete to the 43-yard line and pushed out of bounds is Maurer by Quatman. 
Nice pitch and catch at the boundary out there. A little out route, about seven yards. <laughs> so I might see him work the sides here a little bit. Of course, you don't need, you know, 30 yards on a completion. You've got time. You've got a timeout, apparently. And as we said in high school football, the clock stops every time there's a first down. Hart with a quick pass. This is out to Eilerman across midfield to the 49-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, I think he wanted to turn it to the outside and good job defensively by LCC taking away the boundary over there, keeping him in play. That appeared to be number nine, Mylon Cowens on the stop. Hart quick pass again. This is Eilerman again out to the 40-yard line and pushed out of bounds. So working that right side of the field and the Redskins are having some success and LCC is going to take a timeout. Yeah, I think they're going to make an adjustment right here and talk to the DBs on how they want to cover. Got to keep the ball into the middle of the field, make them throw vertical. I was going to say that was, I think, three straight completions over to that far side that Fort Laramie was able to, to get. So, uh, so just like that, the ball is at the 40 one yard line of LCC and they haven't taken that much time off the clock. There's still 54 seconds left on the clock and they still have a timeout. Yeah, you gotta believe another 20 yards is gonna put him in field goal range. That would put him at about the 22 and seven back, uh, that'd be 29, add 10 to it, be a 39 yard field goal. Aiden Bolin, the kicker on the Fort Loramie roster has Attempted only one field goal this season, has not made it. 31 of 33 extra points, make that 33 of 35 now on extra points. So that's something that's part of the calculus as well as we get into the final moments of this first half. Second down and short, Hart back to pass. This one going a little longer and this is Eilerman again at the 20 yard line as he is pushed out of bounds. Good for another Citizens National Bank first down, and they're in the structure red zone. Boy, what a pretty thrown ball and a pretty executed route there by Fort Larmy. I just threw it over the hands and extended hand of Caden Falk. The six-foot linebacker jumped to as high as he could and just couldn't get a fingertip on it. So Good there, job by Fort Larmy. So there's a leaping LCC defender and couldn't quite get there. So now a fresh set of downs, 46 seconds. Hart taking off and running, and LCC is there. Going to stop him for a loss of one on the play. And tick, 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 tick. The clock going. 36 seconds left in the first half. Redskins getting back together quickly. Hart back to pass. Eilerman again and is going to be tackled inbounds at the 15-yard line. So nice play over there by... Getting the Cowan's keeping him in play. Getting the signal to spike it, so that's what they're going to do, and that's what he does with 14 seconds remaining. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Cowan's had to do whatever he could to keep him in play and did a good job with it. Puts him in fourth down in about, what, five yards? Yeah. So... I don't want to speculate. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I, I guess. Well, I guess my question would be in that situation: if you do have a timeout remaining, wouldn't that be a situation where you just use a timeout instead of having to burn it down? Because it's fourth right. down now. I think he believes he's used his timeouts. Fourth and five, and Hart is going to take off and run oh, and big hit. Play. Hit there coming from behind. I think that was Parker. It was. He lowered the shoulder into him, knocked him off balance. Big play by that senior. So he picks up a couple of yards, but not enough. It's going to be a turnover on downs. Big play for LCC, and they'll take over with nine seconds remaining in the first half. Big hit. Yeah. Said Hart looked like he had uh, nothing but green grass in front of him, and Parker came from behind and tracked him down and took him down. There you see on the web insurance instant replay. And now LCC will most likely just down this one and head to halftime with a 10-point lead, and that's exactly what happens. One half in the books here from Lima Spartan Stadium. It's a 24-14 lead for LCC. We'll be back for the third quarter after this on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. And our scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Cole Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. 24-14, Lima Central Catholic on top of Fort Laramie here at Lima Spartan Stadium. Of course, the winner of this contest getting a home game we believe in the postseason. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you. And a contest that has gone back and forth, but the T-Birds able to get out to a little bit of a lead uh, due to some uh, pretty good play at the end of the first half. Well, the field goal, you know, he decided to go for the field goal to make it a two-possession game and converted that, you know, field goal right there to extend it to, to what, double digits, 24 to 14. But it was a back and forth affair you know, right there, and, and it's going to continue to be, and it's going to come down to, you know, taking care of the football, not turning it over, and, you know, can they contain the arms of both quarterbacks and especially Mr. Burke on the perimeter if you're Fort Laramie to defend him, and then you got to watch Quatman on the other side, so if you're Fort Laramie, so it's going to be a very entertaining second half, and like I said, both these coaches, they could have you know, said, hey, you know what, we're in the playoffs, but there's a lot on the line with a home field ga uh, game, you know, to play here with one half to go. Yeah, of course, the, the playoffs being uh, finalized, of course, uh, no, tomorrow will be when that all comes into fruition. And uh, Fort Lormy comes back and wins this one, we believe. This is all unofficial, of course. Nothing is uh, official until the OHSAA <laughs> says so. Uh, they'll be playing Layman Catholic hosting uh, that contest. But if they lose, they'll be taking on Cincinnati College Prep on the road. If LCC holds on to win this game, they will host Ayersville next week. And if they lose, they'll be on the road taking on Macomb. So we are getting started here in the third quarter of action as Fort Laramie takes it out to the 38-yard line. And that is where Gabe Hart will take over on offense. His first start this season, and uh, I would say Hart has performed pretty well. It makes a lot of sense why you know, Maurer was having a really good season at quarterback, and they moved him over into a wide receiver position, just getting another athlete out there. And it's paid off dividends so far for Fort Laramie. Absolutely. He led him right down the field there towards the end of the game. Real quick comment he made on LCC playing McComb. I believe LCC is the one that knocked McComb off last year out of the playoffs. I believe you're right. So first down, Hart rolls out and hits his man at the 47-yard line. Spencer Knopf coming up with that one. That's good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, 6'3", junior, tight end. You know, caught that one and did a good job securing the football because I'll tell you, he took a pop from Billy Burke from that safety position. Good job on the pitch and catch and holding on to that football. Indeed he did, so that's going to move them into plus territory now. Hart, screen pass over to Will Holland, and Holland is swallowed up there at the 49-yard line as Matthew Quatman gets in there on the stop for a loss of two. Good job shedding the block there by Mr. Quatman, Matthew Quatman as we speak, and making the open field tackle on that pass out into the flat. The only time Fort Laramie drives have really stalled out is when they've gotten behind the chains and behind schedule, as you might say. Uh, the LCC defense, of course, being primarily responsible for that. In fact, really the only really bad sequence they had was having that happen. Now Hart taking off on second down and showing some nice forward motion there as well as he takes it out to the 39-yard line, picks up almost 10 on that play. It's going to make a third down and short. Yeah, Isaac Lepper on the tackle right there, but not until, you know, a big gain there by that young man. Good job stepping up, keeping his composure and getting as many yards as he could with his feet, putting him in, like you said, a third and short situation. You got to believe almost a two down territory. Yeah, you know, you're certainly consider going forward on fourth down. Uh, certainly when you're on this part of the field and if it's a short one. So here's Hart and he's just going to keep it on third and short and is going to be close to the first down and indeed he is going to be short so we'll see what head coach Spencer Wells decides right here and now. Yeah I think the hesitation right there instead of just putting his shoulder down and trying to go through the defender he hesitated and that allowed excuse me that allowed LCC to close on the football and make the tackle. 
maybe having to adjust a little bit. Pressure coming up the middle and anyway, not able to get enough around it. So it's gonna be fourth and one. Empty backfield, Hart in the gun and he's just gonna take this one and met at the line of scrimmage, but second effort as he dives over and I think that is gonna give him enough for a Citizens National Bank first down. Yes, indeed it will. Caden Falk was in there I think on the first hit, but Hart able to stretch out enough and move the sticks. Yeah, he, he got the football leaning forward, which is all good runners do. You want your balance to go forward and he extended it enough it's not where his knee, and it's where his knee hits, but if the football's extended, and the official said, was right on top of him, said he got enough for the first down. Now hard back to pass, pressure coming on the screen. Holland completes it, has the catch, and avoids some tacklers out to the 25, to the 24 yard line before he is tackled. That's good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Billy Burke in there on the stop. Yeah, Billy doesn't get him. He's gonna have, he marches his way to the end zone for six points. Nice uh, play call right there. LCC brought the pressure and they ran a little slip screen action right there. A little, they called it a chip block and then he just popped open. Nice little pitch and catch, nice gain there. LCC just couldn't secure him and bring him down. I actually had to escape the clutches there of Johnny McKee, the 6'1", 328 pound junior. And here's Hart with the keeper on first down. And a number of T-Birds in there on the stop. I think Isaac Leppert in there again, among others on the stop there. Second down coming up. Good call there by Carson Hefner also helping out. Redskins, no rush. Second and eight. Hart. Flushed out of the pocket, lets this one go. Looking end zone, pass incomplete. As there were a couple guys down there, Maurer was a potential. I think Ty Kemper was the man who got the hands on the football and it's incomplete third and eight. Wow, and I watched the action in the backfield. He took a wicked shot. Speaking of, you know, Gabe Hart did right there by the defense. I'm not sure if it was uh, EJ Jones that got in there, but somebody put a licking on him and he got up real, real slow. So Hart still in, third down and eight. Redskins looking for points on this drive. Hart going and pass is incomplete. I think he might have been looking for Spencer Knopf on that play. Well, they were asking for like a defensive hold, but the officials were right on top of it. They didn't feel there was enough contact to warrant that yellow flag, so it's going to put them in a fourth and long situation. And you got to think, again, not really sure. Again, as we mentioned, Aiden Bolin, only one field goal attempted this season for Fort Loramie and did not make it. And it appears that that uh, question will not be answered at this moment as they're going to go for it on fourth and eight. Another chance to convert on fourth down. Pressure coming right up the middle. Hart hit as he throws, puts this one up in the end zone and batted down. And another terrific fourth down stop by the T-Bird defense. Boy, the pressure coming aggressively on the inside by big number 75, Gianni McKee, the 6'1", 328 pound junior with the pressure on the quarterback. Good defense there by LCC in the secondary to bat that ball down in the end zone. So LCC with another terrific stop on defense, and now that'll bring their offense out for the first time in this third quarter. Fort Loramie's drive chews up uh, almost uh, five minutes, about four and a half minutes on the third quarter clock. And now it'll be LCC's turn to come out, their first drive of the second half. Parker, quick pass, getting it out to Mikey Quatman. Quadman staying in bounds. And they're gonna say he stepped out at the 38 yard line. Gonna be good for Citizens National Bank first down. Sorry partner, it all started with Billy Burke on that block, springing his teammate to get up the sideline. He was one step away from getting about another 20 yards. Slippery, that's a great word for that young man because I'm telling you, when he gets his feet going north and south, he's gonna be a tough one to bring down. 
Quatman, a 5'9", 140-pound freshman. Goodness gracious, freshman. Yep. Very young LCC team, what'd we, what'd we say? Five seniors or what'd we see? I think there was only five. I think so. Here's Parker, one of those seniors, pushing the, <laughs> the rugby scrum forward on first down out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Rugby scrum? Yep. What about the old Touche Push? That's not very old right Eagles. now. They're, they're, Absolutely. That's, that's in its glory right now until they change the rules and make it illegal and move on to something else. I don't know. It'll happen. You can drop kick the running back across the line <laughs> at some point. I don't know. Second down and five. You won't see me on the National Football League Rules Committee anytime soon. <laughs> Um, Scott Paulty's going to call timeout. That's his first of the third quarter. We'll take a timeout as well. 6.39 remaining in the third quarter. LCC up 24-14 to 14 here on WOSN. <laughs> Second down and five coming up for LCC here on WOSN. Taking on Fort Laramie, Carson Parker taking the ball up the middle to the 48-yard line. Going to be very close to a Citizens National Bank first down. In fact, I thought he had gotten it, but based on the official spot, he's going to be about a yard short. Appeared to be number 57, the senior Calder Bergman on the stop, got him by the ankles. Must have thought the knee went down first before the football. I think you're right. Third and one. T-Bird's up 10. Here's Parker working off that left side. Has the Citizens National Bank first down and tackled at the 45-yard line as Aiden Bolin in there on the stop for Fort Laramie. And another T-Bird first down. Good job by the men up front opening up them holes there for Parker to get through along with his teammates. So much like the drive for Fort Laramie that chewed up about four and a half minutes of this third quarter clock. Lima Central Catholic embarking on a drive that so far is stretching into two minutes. And here's Parker again working that right side. Had a nice block for Quadman, just went right around the end. There he gets a nice block from Quatman. Hurdles Matthew and gets into the depth end zone for a touchdown. A Berkshire Electric touchdown for the T-Birds. And what an electric run by Carson Parker. But I'll tell you what, you know, you saw Quatman with the block. Billy Burke also, he could have got a crack back block there and just made contact with his chest. That's going to be a great replay to show because I'll tell you what, execution was done with perfection, especially from their perimeter players springing him for that long run and that touchdown. A 46-yard touchdown run for Carson Parker, and it's a 30-14 to 14 LCC lead on the Lee Singers Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And the kick is up, and it is good. So all that talk about bleeding the clock for a drive, never mind. 5.18 left in the third quarter. T-Birds on top, 31 to 14 here on WOSN. Welcome back to today's instant replay brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Lima Central Catholic with another touchdown, 31 to 14. They lead on Fort Loramie and another squib kick right up the middle. Spencer Knopf fields this one, brings it out to the 30 six yard line and was still on his feet, but they're gonna blow this one dead. And uh, if you're the Fort Lormie Redskins, you're, the territory you're in now is you have to score. You have to get something on this drive. Yeah, you gotta get some form of points right there. LCC's very content now to just to kick the ball into the ground. That's that's two kickoff receptions. Mr. Knopf had the tight end. He's, he had a big grab there before the first half, but he had two kickoff 
returns there. Got as many yards as he could by that young man for Fort Laramie. Ball spotted at the 37. First and 10. Pass complete across the 42 yard line. Going to pick up about five or six on that play as the aforementioned Knopf picks up that reception there. Good job sitting down there, making the catch on one knee, securing that football, keeping the defender from reaching around. And if you're Fort Laramie, there's still almost 17 minutes of game time left in this game, so you don't need to panic, you don't need to have big plays, but you need to have something scoreboard-wise happen on this drive. There's a nice pass out to Max Maurer at the 48-yard line. He gets across to the 43-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. I'll tell you, that young man, you know, he's slinging the football. Mr. Hart making good decisions. The offensive line, this possession right now is protection has been really, really good for the young man. Once he gets his feet set, he can twirl it. But they got to keep LCC, you know, off his back. The, the offensive line protection's got to hold up. Hart making his first start. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, is going to take this one and run with it, and he's pushed out of bounds around the 41-yard line. So a pickup of about three yards on that play. Yeah, pushed out at the boundary right here at the 40 on the near side, real close from possibly being a late hit. You know, bearing down on him. Once that foot is stepped out of bounds, it's it's a 50-50 call by the official. Right. Now second down, Hart with time and intercepted. Oh boy. And this one is gonna be taken to the house, Matthew Quadman all the way for a busher electric touchdown yes sir he read the eyes of the quarterback and jumped the route that's one of those mr hart would like to have back but unfortunately once he let it go mr quatman jumped the route and it was all pay dirt in front of him there's reading a route and then there's almost memorizing a route and that's what quatman looked like he did on that play Takes it all the way back for a touchdown. And well, we watched that. We watched that quite a bit. Remember in the first half, they were throwing some out routes trying to keep from burning clock. And they went to the well one too many times. And Mr. Quatman picked up on it and got, it, got his teammates and coaches six points. Quatman in to attempt the extra point, and it is up, and it is good. So 38 to 14, the T-Birds in full command of this one when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Olds. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And our touchdown sponsor is Busher Electric. They're a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area's communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. And there have been plenty of Busher Electric touchdowns, plenty of electric plays in this one, and they are uh, tilting in the favor of Lima Central Catholic here in this one. 38-14, to 14, the T-Birds on top here in the third quarter. A pick six by the T-Birds leading to their last touchdown. And now Fort Laurie will come back on the field and try and find some answers against this T-Bird defense, which has been, I don't want to say bend but don't break, but really they've really defended the end zone very well. Fort Laurie's had a couple of nice drives that didn't get any points, and then their last drive ending in a pick six for Lima Central Catholic. Well, the turnover bugaboo hit them right there, and now, you know, that their back's against the wall down. 38-14, they've got to find some way to get some points and get them quick. Big big tackle right there by a freshman. Got to get him in. Lawson Flores, number 21. Freshman, big big stop there on the kickoff. Hart with the handoff to Holland on first down, able to keep his feet across the 30 to the 31-yard line. So he picks up about five on that play. Is Looks like the Redskins may try and integrate the run game into things a little bit more. Holland over 1,100 yards from scrimmage this season. Yeah, that's going to be one that Coach Palti and his defensive staff is going to adjust right there. There was too many, too much reaching for the football right there. 
and give credit, like you said, to the ball carrier for maintaining his composure and being strong with it and protecting it and got about six yards for that effort. Second down and four for Fort Laramie. Here's the handoff to Holland again, up the middle, breaking some tackles. Nice second effort there. Getting some yards after contact and a Citizens National Bank first down as he's tackled at around the 39 yard line. Carson Parker, among others, in on the stop. Yeah, two excellent runs right there for Fort Laramie. I'm just, you know, curious to see how Gabe Hart's composure is after throwing that turnover. They're just going to turn him loose and let him throw, and sure enough, they did. Pass to Maurer and finds a nice seam, and he is going to take off. Cowens is going to bring him down at the eight-yard line, so nice recovery by Cowens, but Maurer with the big catch and run is going to make it a Citizens National Bank first down and put Fort Laramie in the structure red zone. So a desperately needed large play for Fort Laramie. I'll tell you, what a great effort by Mylon Cowens chasing him down. He could have said, you heck with it. That's a touchdown, up 38 to 14, but he didn't give up on it. Here's Holland barreling inside and takes that one right in for a Busher electric touchdown. So Fort Loramie not showing any quit as they go right down the field on this, fort, on this LCC defense and score now 38 to 20 LCC. Yeah, they play with a little chip on their shoulder, you know, with a little attitude right there. And, like you said, marched it right down and took it into the end zone. I'm sure Coach Baldy's not going to be pleased about that when he brings the defense over. But I'm not so sure a lot of those kids aren't going both ways. Aiden Bolin puts that one up and in. So with 1.50 left in the third quarter, Fort Loramie showing some life. They got a large uphill battle to go. LCC on top, 38 to 21. Welcome back, LCC with a 38 to 21 lead over Fort Loramie. The Redskins going right down the field and scoring. And it's gonna be an onside kick that I think LCC is going to recover. Good and maybe quite effort. fortunate to recover it. Yes. Sure, you betcha. Because that was an unexpected onside kick, and it looked like the quarterback. Said Parker was the one who recovered a good heads up play because the, the ball has to travel 10 yards before the kicking team can recover it, but the receiving team can recover it at any time. Right. And Parker heads up play there to get, I think it might actually kicked over a little bit that direction and Parker jumps on top of it. And uh, taking a risk there is Fort Laramie. So LCC gets the football back already in plus territory. And you got to think there's no, uh, no taking your foot off the gas yet if you're Lima Central Catholic. Well, that's not an easy play either because they're coming at full steam. Those kickoff guys to mm -hmm. displace those players trying to recover the football. Quatman up the middle across to the 37 yard line and waiting for the signal. I think it is going to be second down. They're going to have him a little short of the first. McCumber in on the stop along with Bolin. Lima Central Catholic had a sizable lead against Delphi St. John's earlier in the season, something that you know LCC fans probably don't want to relive, and St. John's coming all the way back to win that one 42 to 40. Obviously, LCC wanting to avoid something like that happening in this contest. Here is Parker on second down and short. Gets the Citizens National Bank first down across to the 31-yard line. You know, and you bring up a great point. That's where you got to lean on your senior leadership, you know, players. And, you know, I'm sure it's fresh in their mind and they don't want it to happen again. Well, you know what? You got five seniors on this ball club with a lot of underclassmen. Lean on that senior leadership mm -hmm. and uh, finish this game off. As we said, Lima Central Catholic, well, both these teams are heading into the postseason. Of course, this game is going to matter into uh, position, certainly. As we've said, we believe that whoever wins is going to get a home game. Quatman here on first down, keeping those legs churning out to the 25-yard line. And that is where he is going to be stopped after about a six-yard gain. Uh, of course, 
Lima Central Catholic making it all the way to the state semis last year before uh, finally losing a contest. Fort Laramie having a pretty good run as well. And we'll see if Lima Central Catholic can continue that as that's going to be the final play of this third quarter. Heading to the fourth, it's a 38-21 lead for LCC here on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's presenting sponsor is Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Fourth quarter, ready to get started here. LCC on top, 38-14, looking for more. Here on second down and short, Parker taking out to the 20-yard line. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you on this Saturday. Football action here is the winner of this one. We'll get a home game in the postseason. LCC hanging on, wanting to hang on to a 38-21 lead, and it has been uh, mostly offense. And for LCC, the defense has actually showed up pretty well, especially here in the second half. Yes, they have. On that last stop, Lewis Hart for Fort Laramie, along with McCumber. And the sun has popped out. So this is National Bank first down in the structure red zone now is LCC. Here's Quatman taking that across the 15 to the 11. Banged his way all the way down there, didn't he? He certainly did. Damian Bruns on the stop for Fort Laramie. Boy, now those jerseys, now you tell me it's not easier with that sun out to see them jersey numbers. That's a lot nicer to, uh, <laughs> to get the red and blue contrast in the sun. Crazy Ohio weather. Yep. Might snow in a couple minutes, who knows? And guess what? We're still here in Ohio. <laughs> We're still right, yeah. High of 75, low of 30. Barker working it inside, carrying another guy in. Citizens National Bank first down, and he has stopped at the one yard line. That's something LCC uh, this half certainly has been able to do is they've been able to find holes in that line and advance the ball. Fort Laramie has not have yet had much of an answer for just those runs right up the middle. No, and you know what? The center and the guard positions are opening it up and you know, Parker's using his strength and athleticism, more so his strength than just using that lower body and getting as many yards as he can churn. And uh, he's going to find his way to pay dirt, you know, here in, in, if they're not careful because of his legs and his ability to, to lean forward. First and goal, and Parker just lowers the shoulder and takes it in for a Busher Electric touchdown. And that's that senior leadership we <coughs> talked about it, you know, this last time out. Lean on it uh, with your experience and let that be the ones to carry you. 48 yard drive for LCC. And they extend their lead 44 to 21 with the extra point coming up. You know, and you look at Fort Larmy's roster partner, they've only got 10 seniors. So it's going to look bright for Fort Larmy also. Yeah, both these teams very young. It's going to get that playoff experience, so to speak. Get a taste of it. Quatman's kick is up, and it is good. 9.57 remaining in the game. It's a 45-21 lead for Fort Laramie here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our touchdown sponsor is Busher Electric, a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area's communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. Lamb Central Catholic with a touchdown answer to Fort Loramie's quick drive, and it is now a 45-21 lead for LCC as the T-Birds are just under 10 minutes away from notching their sixth win of the year. They would finish with a record of six and three. Of course, the one game they had scheduled against Richmond Heights, ended up not happening, it was uh, canceled. So they will end up with only nine games this season instead of 10. Good return there by that young man. Appeared to be number two, Mikey Quatman, and number nine, 
Mylon Cowan's on the stop. You know, real quick, partner, need to send out a special thank you to Spencer Wells, the coach of Fort Laramie, and Scott Palti here at LCC. Makes our job a lot easier. Got us all the information we need to make this broadcast the best that it possibly be. And also, thank you to LCC for hosting us here this afternoon. Here's Hart rolling out to the right on first down. Has time, has a man pass complete out to Cole Barhorst. Out across the 46-yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Indeed, want to thank the coaches and the, uh, the athletic staff of uh, Lima Central Catholic for... Uh, Allowing us to be here today at Lima Spartan Stadium, Lima Stadium Park, to broadcast of the regular season. Hard to believe 10 weeks of high school football have come and gone. Time flies, especially when you get older, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, it goes by quick like. Will Holland with some hard yardage right up the middle out to the 37-yard line. Going to be a second down and short coming up for Fort Loramie. Carson Hefner on the stop for the T-Birds. So we had mentioned that these two teams had combined for nearly 70 points their last two times up. Right now they've combined for 66 points and they might have more. Here's Will Holland and laying a truck down on Mylon Collins. Out to the 20 yard line. It's Citizens National Bank first down. That's going to put them in the structure red zone. And Cowens was a little shaken up on that play. He's going to head out. And he yeah. took quite a lick from Holland. Yeah, that's a good job by the officiating staff right there, protecting that young man, making sure he's going to come off on the side. But like you said, that was a heck of a play there by that running back who just dropped the shoulder. I didn't actually see who had it, but I did see the collision. But you got like the grit and the determination of Fort Laramie. You know, they threw the punch, but LCC responded back. Now let's see if, you know, if Fort Laramie wants to return one again. You know, here down, what, 24 to go with just under, uh, just over, excuse me, eight minutes to go on the clock. I mean, it's a four score game. There's gonna be have some fancy things happen as Hart hit as he throws and it was uh, Falk getting in there and knocking that one down incomplete. That'll bring up second down. Yeah, and earlier in the game, you remember the first half, they threw over the top and he couldn't get his hands on it. By golly, he did right there. Got both hands on, almost you know, pulled it out of midair. So he might have rushed that throw a little bit too as that was perhaps not where he wanted to go with it, but he was getting pressure on all sides. And he's had a really good day for making you know your first start of the season. Hart back to pass, and that is picked off again right there at the one-yard line. And he's going to slide down there at the nine. So another interception as that will do it. And I think that was... Well, what a heady play. Carson Hefner. Yeah, what a heady play. I mean, he went down, you know, when he, he, he brought it out from the goal line and got it out to about, what, the eight or ten-yard line. And... Just went down with it. That's one of those passes that Gabe Hart, you know, first time, you know, at the varsity quarterback position, first start of the season. As he gains that experience in the offseason and the coaches work with him, that's a ball he's got to throw deep where it's not going to be intercepted. If anything, it's going to go out of bounds and it's just going to be an incomplete pass. That was just an underthrow. He was open, but he had to really extend that with his arm strength to getting the football or at least give him a chance. Both Hart and Maurer are juniors, so whenever this season does come to an end for Fort Laramie, those guys will definitely be back as Parker on first down with the carry picking up about a yard on this play is now LCC is uh, most likely in full kill clock mode up 24 with 747 remaining in this one. Well, in the Hart situation to, to expand on it, you know, it's easy to go out and throw a route in practice, but until you get into game-like situations and live play, you know, it's, it's a timing thing and it's an accuracy thing and those things are going to be corrected, you know, breaking down film and I know Coach Wells is going to do it as well as Coach Baldy and those problems, th those problems can easily be fixed. In spite of the interceptions, Hart, as you said, having a, a, a pretty solid showing considering this was his first start of the season. And now on the screen pass, that goes out to the 21-yard line. That's going to be good for a Citizens National Bank first down. 
Hoying on the stop, along with Lewis Hart. Watman on the completion, and I think he might be favoring that right ankle a little bit. There's a lot of stuff that needs to still go, right? That right leg, certainly. Again, he doesn't get those yards without a lead block, and Billy Burke did it again. He got his, got his man set up and squared him up. Made a nice block to get his teammate free for that first down. Only 21. And a sweep goes nowhere as McCumber is in there in the backfield for the stop. Loss of about five on that play. Yeah, he's played really well defensively tonight for Fort Larmy. He's been all over the place from that linebacker spot. Solid effort tonight by that young man. Big play there, big TFL. It was Mikey Quatman on the carry. Yeah, tried to run a little jet sweep, didn't they, to the mm -hmm. near side here, and he just exploded through that gap and made the tackle. Nice play. We commented earlier on the speed of Mikey Quatman on one of those earlier plays, and I think that's probably something they like to do with him. But in any case, Fort Army was there. Now here's Parker diving out to the 24-yard line on second down. Out to the 24, and that'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, Bauer got him by the ankles, because if he doesn't get him, he's got a long way to run. Yep. I mean, when I was on track, he was. I love working with Wayne. Well, if the result of this game holds out, we think we're probably able to safely say the, the projections are that LCC will have a home game next week. They will take on Ayersville. And for Fort Loramie, they will travel down to Cincinnati College Prep to take on the Lions. So uh, Fort Loramie going to have to get on the bus a little bit and uh, travel down to CCP while the T-Birds get to entertain Ayersville. And Parker with a... Little bit of a hurdle out across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Good for a Citizens National Bank first down. Nifty move by that senior right there. Gutsy laid it out on the line. Got there with his athleticism. Athleticism. I got a trick or a trick question for you. Okay. Aren't all games now on Friday nights playoffs? Yes. What are we going to do with Lima Senior if they have to host a game too? Well, I think they they are they are. Um, well, Lima Senior will play here next week, and I think LCC is going to play somewhere else. I know that sounds extremely obvious. Could be Shawnee, could be Bath. I know those are a couple of things that have been talked about. Okay. But I don't think that the – nothing is official, of course, until the, sure. the, the pairings are made official. But I think Lima Senior is hosting – a, uh, a home game here next week. So the Spartan fans will be able to enjoy a, a home uh, home playoff game. Lima Senior, of course, finishing an eight and two campaign. It's been quite a few years since the Spartans have won eight, ton wait, won eight games in a season. I'll get it out eventually. So Lima Senior enjoying their success this season. Yeah, you know, I was just curious, you know, not being from the Lima Land area, being mm -hmm. east of here, Thank you for clarifying that. Parker on second down. And the pile still moving. I was going to get a blow down at the 49. Like, let's just keep it going. Let's see how far they go. There's a flag down at the 44 yard line. And I think, are they signaling an eligible man downfield? Not quite sure. Now that one looked like a scrum. Yes. There wasn't much tush push right there. <laughs> that was a good old scrum. Could be a Citizens National Bank first down. The ball currently at the Fort Loramie 49, but we'll see. Oh, they're having a discussion there at the 40 yard line trying to sort this one out. I thought the initial signal that I saw was an eligible downfield. Oh, the helmet coming off, is that what is that what it is? There was a helmet that come off on an LCC player. 
<laughs> yeah. I think that's I think that's what they're calling the uh, the because of the personal foul. So that's going to back that up 15 yards. So instead of a first down, it's going to be a second down and 13 for LCC. Yeah, I do know the player has to come out of the game for at least one play when the helmet does come off. That's the first time I've ever seen that called. Yeah, I think so too. First time this season, maybe first time in a while, but uh, that's partially what took the officials so long to make sure that they were on the same page as far as what they were calling. You know, the gentleman next door seems to think that they will play at Shawnee. That being That's LCC. Right. Shawnee, of course, with the uh, relatively new turf field. Here's Parker on second down and long, and McCumber with the shoestring tackle. and. That'll bring up third down and long as we come up on 245 remaining in this one. Want to thank our crew for helping us out. Jacob O'Neill, Kelsey Beimer for setting everything up and braving the elements. Fortunately, it turned out to be a relatively nice evening. The rain, rain went away. They do a great job each and every week. Those two along with everybody else. They certainly do. Glad to have you on the mic again. Looking forward to any playoff contest we Thank might be you. seeing in the next few weeks. I love working with you guys. It's It's been a lot of fun. Let's just keep the thing rolling and hopefully we can get some teams from this area, Northwest Ohio, mm -hmm. West Central Ohio, in a state championship I've never been to Bath, so it would be nice. final two. Lima Central Catholic is going to take a timeout. So we've got 208 remaining in this one. And you're one of the, the fun parts of covering this particular side of the state. I've covered the east side of Ohio for a number of years and now cover the west side of the state is there are a number of teams that make really deep playoff mm -hmm. runs. A lot of them are from the MAC. And if you're a fan of the MAC listening, uh, watching this broadcast, you know all about that. But we have uh, a, a number of schools that always kind of make that push. Of course, Van Wert, uh, recent champions. We had like LCC who made a state uh, semifinal run last year. So it always seems like there's always a couple of teams that break out. And now with the expansion of the playoffs, and there are a variety of, of thoughts on, you know, should you or should you not expand the playoffs? But it allows... Uh, a lot of our local teams who previously would not have made the postseason to have another opportunity at a playoff win. Absolutely. Whether you like that or not, that provides that opportunity and, and there is certainly something to be said for giving teams a shot in the postseason. Yeah, and to elaborate on that, I was fortunate enough to be able to, to go over to Tiffin, go up to Sandusky, go over to Marion, go down to Troutwood Madison. Very, very lucky. You know, it's it's enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. I don't mind traveling and to support the kids. And, and I know WOSN does a tremendous job. And it can is not possible, cannot be possible, without the support of our donations and our and our businesses that you know sponsor their local communities and their local teams. Absolutely. This is a nonprofit enterprise that we do here at WOSN, and we simply cannot bring you these contests without your financial support. So consider that if you enjoy this broadcast and others like it, even if this is not your school, but if you enjoy the broadcast of your school, whoever that is, uh, you can make donations to WTLW.com forward slash donate and uh, click on the link and uh, make your donations as the LCC T-Birds punt. It's fielded at the 41, and the Redskins will get the football back with a minute 12, a minute 11 to play with to see if they can put maybe one more score on the board and make this one just a little bit closer than it is right now at 41, 45 to 21 in favor of the Thunderbirds. Typically, I think playoffs are released, if my memory serves me correctly, like at 2 p.m. on Sunday to the media. So stay tuned on that to see where the local pairings are going to be taking place and what team is going to host a game and what team is going to go on the road. This is Caden Cantwell getting in there, the 5'11", 150-pound freshman. Of course, uh, by the time this game airs on WOSN for the first time, you were watching that probably will know where the uh, pairings are. <laughs> Good point. 
good point there, partner. So you can yell at the TV, we already know this. Well, it's Saturday when this game happens, so we aren't exactly sure yet. We, we, we took a fairly educated guess. We think that Fort Lauderdale will play Cincinnati College Prep and LCC will be playing Ayersville, but that won't be official until Sunday. Jaden Williams with the solo tackle right there. Nice job by that young man splitting the gap, making the solo tackle. Redskins will get one more play run here if they if they desire to. They don't have to, but it looks like they will. The final seconds are going to tick off of this one. Hart in the backfield and is going to hand this one off for about a yard gain, and that is going to do it here from Lima Spartan Stadium as the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds wrap up their 2023 regular season at 6-3 with a 45-21 win over Fort Loramie. Fort Loramie heads into the postseason with a 5-5 five five record. That is going to do it for us here from Lima Stadium Park. For Darren Gilbert and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everybody, from Lima.